Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the difference between privacy and confidentiality. Now privacy and confidentiality might sound the same, but they're not the same, especially from a cybersecurity perspective. So I'm going to go ahead and explain the concept of privacy versus confidentiality. And to do so, I'm going to be using an analogy. And this analogy is living in a small gated community like this one to explain the concept of privacy and confidentiality. So what is a privacy in this closed gated community? Well, it's the right of each homeowner to decide who can come to their house, look through their windows, or be invited to their private party. So it's your right as a homeowner to share your personal space and certain information with other if you choose to share those. So you can choose to do that. For example, you may not mind sharing your gardening tips with your neighbor, but you want to keep your financial conversation with your family, with your spouse and medical history private. So you decide what you want to share and what you don't want to share. This is the privacy. It refers to the individual rights and control over their personal information and how it's shared. It's your, it's your right to share whatever you want to and keep private whatever you want to. Just like the homeowners decide who knows what about their lives, privacy allows individuals to control what personal information they share online and with which entity. This is your privacy. If we look at confidentiality on the other hand, confidentiality on the other hand is like the measure the community takes to ensure that no one outside the community or uninvited guest can sneak into their houses or private gathering. So simply put, confidentiality is that gate that the community install to protect this information. So it's the responsibility of the community security team to make sure that the personal spaces and private event of homeowners are accessible only to those who have explicit permission to be there. So think of confidentiality as that gate outside the community. This includes fences, security cameras, strict entry controls, so on and so forth. So confidentiality involves measures taken to protect that information from unauthorized access or leaks. Just as a gated community uses physical security measures to protect homes, confidentiality in cybersecurity involves techniques and policies to ensure that sensitive information is accessed only by authorized users and systems. So this is basically a small introduction to privacy and confidentiality using the analogy. Now we're going to dive a little bit more into confidentiality, dive a little bit more into a privacy from a cybersecurity perspective, but I hope you got the big picture. Let's go ahead and start to discuss confidentiality first. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. To start discussing confidentiality, we're going to see how NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, describe confidentiality. Well, it describes confidentiality as the practice of limiting access to information only to authorize practices. So what would confidentiality involve then? It involved safeguarding personal details and business secrets. For an organization, now we're not talking about the community anymore, this means not only protecting trade secret, but also personal data it handles during their operation. Think about businesses. Businesses handle personal data for customers. Well, they have to protect this information. And to effectively safeguard this information, organizations need to clearly define what counts as personal information. So if you want to protect something, you have to define what are you protecting. So what do we need to protect? What information do we need to protect as confidential information? Well, one thing we need to protect is something called personal identifiable information known as PII. Well, what is a PII, personal identifiable information? It refers to any data that can pinpoint who an individual is. So any information that can give you a hint 
who that individual is. It doesn't even, you're not giving the information directly. You're even given a hint. That's a PII. And this include many things, but not limited to the following list. Names, obviously names. <laughs> That's easy. Uh, current names, previous names, any aliases. Those, this is considered PII. Personal identification number, social security number, passport, driver's license number, state IDs, financial account numbers, those are considered PII. Your address, whether that's a physical address, your street address, or a digital address, like an email address. Personal characteristic, photos, fingerprints, handwriting, or any other biological trait. In essence, confidentiality in this context means making sure that only people who have absolutely need to see this PII can access it. And the reason is to protect individual privacy and the organization sensitive data, protect the confidentiality and that individual privacy, the right for their information. What can the company do to to increase this confidentiality, they should reduce the footprint. What does that mean? Well, effective cybersecurity strategies often prioritize reducing the volume of personal data they handle. Well, if you don't need someone's social security, if you don't need their passport number, don't collect this information. Reduce your footprint, reduce the information that you need to protect. This means keeping only information essential for what you need for your organization and your relationship with this customer to process their transaction. Also, it's important for an organization to frequently check their person personal data that they stored to ensure it's useful for their key operation. Only keep the information that's necessary to operate the business. In simple term, good cybersecurity practice involved collecting as little information as possible and only keeping what's absolutely necessary for the business to function. And this is what we mean by reduce your footprint. The less information you have, the less information you have to protect in terms of confidentiality. And on a regular basis, the organization should reassess the stored information to the side if they still need it, ensuring they're not holding on any data that's not purposeful. So simply put, if the data is no longer needed, let's assume it was needed and now it's no longer needed. How do you know this? You go back and you review. And if it's no longer needed, get rid of it. Get rid of it. And how do you get rid of it? We'll talk about that later. How do you discard properly the information? I'm going to say now delete it, remove it. But we're going to talk properly about this. So only keep the information that's necessary. And you want to use safeguarding techniques to protect the information. To, sa to safeguard confidentiality and PII, organization are advised to, following, to, to follow the following steps. No, obviously those are not you know, a complete list, but few tips. Well, First, audit existing personal data. The first thing you want to do is examine the personal information you currently have to ensure you are you are correct, you have the information that's correct, relevant, up-to-date, and comprehensive. This is like doing a thorough inventory check to make sure all the information on hand is needed. Do I need this information? If not, get rid of it. That's a good technique, and we talked about this. Again, limit the collection of personal data. Collect only the least amount of personal data for your business. Think of this being selective about what you add to your shopping cart, choosing only what truly needed. If something is not needed, don't ask the customer for it, especially if it's a form of additional PII. Set review access level. Here clearly define who can access what information and under what condition, and on a regular basis, check the access permission and list to ensure they remain appropriate. So don't give this information to anyone. Don't give the access to anyone. This is similar to giving keys to certain rooms in a building and give those keys to only the people who needs a biz who have a business in that room and on a regular basis review who hold those keys. Plan for data deletion. Again, create a strategy to securely delete personal information that's no longer needed to the organization. I'm no longer needed. Why am I holding it? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need resources and effort to protect this. Imagine this as scheduling regular cleanup days to dispose of items that they're no longer useful, ensuring they are discarded safely and securely. That's important. So those are good safeguard for to protect confidentiality. Let's talk about privacy. And when we talk about privacy, we're going to go back to NIST and look at how NIST defined privacy. 
NIST view privacy as an individual or entity's right to keep their information secure and under their own control. It's my information. Privacy is about safeguarding a personal freedom and request. And guess what? NIST, they have a privacy framework to guide, to guide, to guide you. Well, the NIST framework is a guide designed to enhance privacy by using risk management strategies and effective communication with an organization. Well, it's good to have a framework. What is a framework? Framework is rather than you kind of figuring out what's the right thing to do, you would rely on an organization like NIST. NIST will tell you those are the best practices and those practices will be spelled out in this NIST privacy framework. And when you have those, you follow those, you should be in good shape. So let's take a look real quick at a NIST privacy framework. So the purpose of the framework is to guide the information, to guide the organization in protecting individual privacy through three main action. What are those three action? First, integration privacy practices. What does that mean? It means as a new, as you are developing a new system, a new product, a new service, right from the get-go, develop, incorporate privacy protection right from the start. It's like considering safety feature while designing a car, not after the car is made, or when you're building a home, you want to look at safety features in the home before you build the home. Same thing when you're developing a system, a product or a service, integrate those privacy features right from the get-go, right from the beginning. You have to have sharing privacy information, making sure the entire organization understand the privacy measure in place. This is like ensuring everyone on a team knows the game plan, not just the players on the field. So everyone in the company knows the importance of privacy. Also, you want to promote teamwork, encouraging everyone in the organization from those in customer service to those in IT to work together to safeguarding the security. Think this as a relay race where protecting privacy is a baton passed from one runner to another. So in this, in our situation, basically from one department to another. So those three main actions would help in doing what? protecting the privacy of individual. Privacy framework encourages organization to, to view privacy risks as potential issues that individual might face at any point when their data is being handled from the moment it's collected to, till it's securely deleted. So the framework, they want us to look at the life of the information and through that life there's a privacy risk and we have to handle it from the beginning till the end. So this approach required the organization to track the journey of the data like you track a package from the sender to the receiver ensuring it's handled correctly at every step until it reaches its end which is where we safely dispose of it. So it's from collection to deletion. In between, we're going to have processing, we're going to have movement of data. You want to have privacy throughout this process. And this, this is what the NIST privacy framework encourages us to do. Let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. When establishing a plan to purge personal information, what's the primary goal of the organization aim to achieve? Purge means delete. What's their goal of deleting this? Isn't enhancing data accuracy? Do you, do you delete the data to make it accurate? I don't think so. I would say I can eliminate this safely. Increasing data availability. If you're purging the data, you're not making it available. You're just purging it. Reducing privacy risk. Are you reducing privacy risk? Yes. The, the purge, when you have a plan to purge, delete personal information, the reason you do, you do that is once the data is not there, it's not exposed to other people. Other people cannot access it. They cannot steal it. Yes, I would say reducing privacy risk, a good answer, but let's take a look at D. Maximizing data utility. Hold on a second. I'm not maximizing the utility of the data. I am getting rid of the data. I'm purging personal information if this is the data. So D is incorrect. As we expected, C is the correct answer, which is reducing privacy risk, which is reducing your your footprint, re reducing the presence, reducing the amount of data you need to protect. When you purge it, you reduce it, which is better for you. What should you do now? You want to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs. That's going to help you, whether you are preparing for your CPA exam or some other certification or accounting courses. Invest in yourself. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.